Hello my YouTube friends, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'll be teaching you how to build your own invoice or billing system. And we will build all these in active pieces. A common question that I see a lot in the community is how do you attach a PDF when sending an email in Gmail? So I'm also going to be covering this topic today in this video. Let's go ahead and do an automation and do a use case that every single business needs, which is to send invoice to clients. So which is going to be the central focus of this video. So there's different ways of doing this and I'll be showing you two different flows depending on how you want to send your invoice. The first is we're going to be triggering the workflow through a table through a button, which is going to be triggered per client. The second approach is going to be the schedule approach, which is going to be based on the status, which we're going to be sending the invoice on a daily basis. So we'll be using a table to build our database, although you can also use Google spreadsheet as well. You can also use Airtable or Retable, which which should be the same process regardless. So let me know if you want me to do some videos on those. So I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step process of setting it all up from setting up the various fields in AI table and setting up the template in Google Drive, as well as setting up the automation active pieces to create the PDF and attach the email and then send the email to the clients. Sounds good? All right, by the way, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dennis and I'm a principal software engineer. I do weekly videos on coding, automation, and AI. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the notification icon so you don't miss on out on any new videos from me. Please go ahead and hit like to support my channel. I really appreciate it. With that out of the way, let's get started. And I found this, this modern two template so this is something that we, we can use for this demo so there's uh, two links that you can click here either to use this as a google doc or google sheet and this is going to create a copy to your google drive so when you click on this make a copy it's going to go ahead and copy it to your google drive folder so it's going to look like this right so you can remove certain things you can format it so in our case we're going to be remove these two things as we don't really need those ones the most important thing here is we probably want to rename it something that you can do a search on because that's going to be important for us later on in this demo so we're going to be renaming this to invoice template something simple like this all right so if you want to make this into a template that we can use in active pieces we're going to have to look at the different elements that we're going to be changing so the things that on the top for instance we can change this to a company name so this is going to be our company name so let's say I have a company called Automation Inc. And then I can provide here an address, an email, my phone number. So this information is pretty much on the top. That's going to be static to my company. And the thing that we, we probably want to be changing is the one in the bottom. So this contact name information, that's going to change. And the company name, if they have a comp company name, we can also provide it here. There's an address information, there's the phone information, and an email. And then as far as the actual set, uh, services rendered is concerned, uh, there's under the description. You can include here the description, the type of service that you provided, and the quantity if you, is that something that's required, and then the unit price, and then the total. We're going to go, go ahead and change the company name first. If you're using something like Zapier, you're probably used to something like this, where you're supplying the company name information inside the curly braces to curly braces. So in, in active pieces, actually it square brackets. So we're gonna be putting the company information here like this. And then we can also put the address. So two brackets and then put the address in the middle. So we're gonna be supplying these information. We're gonna be passing in the company and the address information, all right? And then we can also supply the phone. If we have the phone, in our case, we don't really have any phone information. We just care about the email. So I'm gonna on in there. I'm going to list out the description of the service that we've provided. So I'm just going to spell it out here. And then for the quantity, I'm just going to hard code this, this to one as this is probably not going to change. So I'm going to be looking at this as if I'm renting a single service to a person just to keep it simple. For the unit price, we're going to be specifying the, the amount here. We're going to be putting the amount and then in the total, since we're just rendering for a single service we're just going to re replace this with the amount itself so that's what it's going to look like and then on the subtotal you're going to have this kind of the same thing as the top you're going to be putting the exact amount 
and we're going to be putting the tax rate. So in this one, we're going to make it static. Let's assume that the tax rate is at 8, uh, 25%. So that's going to be the tax rate. And then we can later on, we're going to be calculating the actual total tax. So we're going to be providing the total tax amount here. So, all right, so we're going to have the amount times the tax rate and this is what's going to be the total tax here and we're not going to be including any shipping handling and then we're going to be, going to be substituting uh, the balances which is going to be the total uh, with the tax total amount the table all right, all right let's so go ahead and jump into a table real quick before proceeding with our automation so i created this data sheet it's called a invoices dash demo and this is what we're going to be using for our automation by default, you're given three different columns, uh, title, options, and attachment. Let's go ahead and rename the first one to invoice ID. And this is going to be an auto, auto number generated. And the second one would be the, the company. And we're going to make this a single line text. The third one that we're going to be adding is the name of the, the person, the contact person that we're going to be sending an in invoice to. That's going to be a single line text as well. And then we're going to be adding the address information and that's going to be we're going to make this we're going to keep this as long text just in case you have a very long address and then the service this could be for any type of service that we're going to be that the that the uh, we're providing the service for so we're going to keep this as single line text so so this could be for web development or web scraping or web automation whatever servicing we're rendering to that client so that's what we're going to put here for the next one, we're going to be adding the notes. And this one is a new field that I think AI table has added recently. It's called work talk. You can actually create um, some notes for this, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to show this off probably at, at a different video, but I'm probably going to skip this uh, for today, but it's something to just keep an ad here, particular setup. We're going to be adding the invoice date and this is going to be a, we're going to make this a date with a specific format, year, month, day so i kind of just use this one for now and we're going to be doing something here so that we can properly render this when we generate our invoice so we're going to keep this simple like this year dash month dash day that's the format and then the next one is going to be the due date so when it's going to be due so that we're going to be adding that here as well and we're going to make this the same format as the previous one we're going to make this year month day and then we're going to be adding the the number a number which is going to be for the amount that's going to be we're going to be billing for all right and also we're going to be uh, making the precision into this format so 1.00 that's going to be the type of precision that we want and then the email address this is going to be where we're getting the email address so we're going to be using the email type of field type how to use this button so we're going to be triggering the actual billing or, or invoicing in two different ways one is to actually click a button which way we can trigger by clicking this button and i'm going to show you guys later on how to do this but we're going to be for now we're just going to we're going to specify button text of send invoice here and you can pick a color that you want it doesn't really matter for now but what i'm going to do is open up a url and which we're going to be triggering a a webhook in active pieces here so we're gonna hit now let's just put something whatever just just to kind of make it happy but i'm going to be supplying the actual url for the for the actual automation once we have it set in active active pieces since we're we're going to be rendering in these dates in in the pdf when we send it out we want to format this in a way that it's going to be readable for the clients when I render these these dates, I don't want it to be in this format. So year, month, day, which is kind of weird. So I want it to be in a, a month, month, day, year type of format. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add this special fields for the due date and the invoice date. So I'm going to be adding this, which is going to kind of look weird, but it'll make sense later on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, define a, a formula here. We're going to be doing the if you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see it. it's a format. So you can basically call this function that you can specify the actual date. So we can pass in the actual date here. So in our case, we're going to be passing in the field of due date. And then and then you can do a comma and then you can specify the format. So in our case, we're going to be doing the 
month, month, day, day type of format. So we're going to be doing this type of format. So we're going to be calling this function the, and then we're going to be passing in the actual uh, field of due date and then comma and then we're going to be passing in this type of month, day, year format. So that's going to be what we're doing here. All right. Hope this makes sense. And then we're going to hit OK. Since we don't have a date here, let, let's say let, let's put a date here, arbitrary date here. Quick. So you see here, once you put 2024, 20, it's, it's automatically just formatting this into this date. Actually, it's it's much easier to read than compared to this one. I, this one can get a little confusing. So just kind of, I think I prefer this type of format anyways. So let's go ahead and, and copy that. Same thing, but we're going to be using the invoice date fix. And we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be doing the... And then we're going to be doing the same thing, except we're gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm pasting the the previous formula. I'm, I'm just going to specify the invoice date instead of the date, uh, the due date. Or in the interest of time, I added four records to this invoice demo that we have. So I added four different records, added the company name, address, the type of services that's being rendered, and then the invoice date, due date, and the amount. So I also put the same email here so that we can test out the email and it's gonna go to, to my personal email so we can so we can go ahead and, and test this information. We're gonna go and come back to this action item here, action button uh, that I've did define in this field because we're going to be supplying this with the webhook information and one thing that i add also added here is the status so I provided a, a field status and i've added a select field type which i put sent and ready as an option so those are the things that i've added here and i made it ready as default all right well, let's go ahead and, and take a look at the first type of flow that we're going to be using to invoke this automation flow if you can remember where we added this action column which has this button where you can specify the actual url right here so i just kind of provide some dummy data here just to kind of get it going but we can go ahead and go to active pieces here and create a new flow here uh, we're going to be using the actual webhook to trigger this automation and we're going to copy this url right we're going to come back to to active pieces and we're going to be substituting this url with an actual url and one thing we're going to be adding here is we're going to be adding actually instead of instead of actually specifying the url we're going to be we're going to be changing to a formula here instead of specifying the url so we're going to be clicking this a uh, switch to formula right here on the right hand side and it's going to switch to a formula and from here, you can pretty much work with different ways of uh, specifying the URL. So one thing you can, one way you're going to do that is to insert this double quotes here. And we're going to put the URL right there in the middle. And then we're going to be adding the question mark. And then we're going to be adding the parameter, which is the record ID, right? And then from here, you can do an equals. And then we're going to do a plus. And then pretty much it gets... What it's going to do is going to be concatenating this information with whatever else I specify on the right hand side. So we're going to be, we're going to, we can pass any of this information like the field, amount, due date information here. But if you want to, if you want to go through all these different things, actually on the bottom, you can see that there's a record ID. By default, each uh, record in, in AA table has this field called record ID, which is not being shown if you actually look at the grid view itself. So we can specify that it's like a record ID and then it's like a function type of deal where what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be passing in the, the URL of the, the actual webhook. Plus we're going to be concatenating the record ID, of this particular record. So for each record, we're going to be handling it this way. All right. So when you hit OK and you click on send demo, it's going to go and open up a URL, which points that URL with the record ID specified. So let's quickly go back to active pieces where here real quick and we're going to go ahead and send data and then we can switch to active pieces here so we have some data so if you click in one of these right if you click that button it's going to op open this up this url and if you go back to active pieces you notice that it triggered a get request for that it's not a post request it's a get request so when you do a get request everything is coming from the query params right so you can specify whatever record id that you want and that's why we did specify the record id 
which points the record in AI table that we want. So let's go ahead and examine that field. We're going to go ahead and add a AI table here. We're going to do a find records. So AI table here, we're going to be using the find records. And then we're going to be specifying the connection. We're going to be specifying the space. And then we're going to be specifying actual. So we, we call it invoices. This is uh, we call it invoice demo. And then from here, we can specify the record ID. Since we, we passed in the record IDs, we can actually pass multiple ones. In our case, we actually just pass. We just want to locate one record ID. So we're going to be adding here. We're going to be clicking on that field name. So we're going to be passing in the record ID. We're going to go drill down to create parameters and we're going to go ahead and insert that. It found this one record, exactly what we're looking for. Since we're specific to, to what we want, which is the record ID, we only give us one record. All right. So next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with Google Drive. So we're going to be specify step here. The first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for a folder because we're going to be what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding or creating a new folder for each client and for each client that's where we're going to put in each folder we're going to be putting the actual pdf of the invoice and the actual template when we created a template and before we modify it we're actually going to be creating a copy for it specific to that client then we're going to produce be producing a pdf based on that copy that we created for a client so i'm going to show you guys how to do that so First thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a Google Drive step here. We're going to be looking for, let's go ahead and search for a folder. And then we're going to be, we're just going to go ahead and search for a file name that contains, and then we're getting the information from the user or the contact information from that customer. So we're going to be go, going down and drill down to the records and we're going to be using the fields and the actual name of that customer so we're going to insert the name here and then we're going to be specifying the folders because that's going to be that's what we're going to be searching on if you want the actual file then you switch it to file but in this case we're going to be searching for folder and we're not going to be searching in any parent folder we're going to go ahead and click search and in our case since we i've been playing around with it so there's there's an actual folder already with this customer information already so we're going to be going ahead and do a branch type over here all right i'm going to explain a little bit why we need the branch and what we're doing here is we're going to be the, so we're going to be spe specifying if the ID exists. So we're going to be looking at the third step, and then we're going to be we're going to be inserting the ID here. All right, and then we're going to be just making sure that it exists or not. So the question that we're going to be asking here: Does the customer folder exist? That's the main thing that we're asking here, right? When we test it, we're going to, we're going to see if it's the condition are true or false. So if the folder exists, we're going to fall in this in this side of the branch here where we don't really need to, to create a folder anymore. If we fall on the false branch, that means we can create a customer folder. So we're going to go ahead and, and do the same thing. For the false, we're going to be creating a folder. So we're going to be creating a folder. We're going to be using the same connection and we're going to be specifying the, the name of the customer as the name of that folder. So we're going to pick, put that customer name here, drill down to customer name and then we're not going to specify that we're going to create it all right and then it's going to give us some id and some other information and the name etc and the mime type which is the apps folder all right so once we create that we're going to go ahead and put that into a we're going to store that in a data store uh, data storage we're going to go ahead and add that information so we're going to be using the folder id as a key we're going to be referencing this folder for the folder id later on when we work with the actual template. So that's where we're going to be putting the template when we generate the PDF and the actual document. All right. And then the value is going to be the actual folder ID. So when we create the new folder, we get the actual ID. That's what we're going to be specifying here. On the true side of the branch, since we already have the folder, we're just going to go ahead and reach out to step number four and specify and put that folder in the storage since we already have that information. Storage. And it's kind of the same thing, same thing as the previous one. We're going to be using the folder ID. And then we know for a fact that this one is going to come from number three because we found that folder. So we're going to go and reach out to folder step number three when we did search that folder. So we're going to put for each side of the branch, we're going to be adding the folder ID 
into the storage, which we can reference later on as a folder ID. We're going to change the scope to flow because we only, we only want this particular storage to exist within the flow. We don't care about adding it into the actual project. So once we get into this branch, we're going to go and, and locate that, that actual folder ID from the storage. So from here, we're going to go ahead and locate the folder ID and changing to flow as well. And then we're going to go ahead and so we can, we can test this step and that's going to place the folder ID in the, in the store for this particular key folder ID. And then from here, we can go ahead and retrieve that key, which is the actual folder ID. So either side we come in from, whether it's true or false, we know that the actual folder ID is there so that we can reference it. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be we're going to be calculating the the tax. If you notice in the invoice template, we can go back here. There's a part here where actually we're calculating the, the total tax based on the 0.25% tax rate. So we're going to go ahead and add a code, and we're going to be passing in the actual amount. So we're going to be passing in the amount and the tax rate. So in our case, we're going to be just hard coding this to 8.25%. Uh, the reason why I specify it here is because you can, you know, if you want to change it later on at some point in the future to to come from a, a different place, then you can go ahead and switch that. In our case, we're just going to hard code it here, 8.25%. And if, as far as the amount, we're going we're gonna to be using the AI tables, um, one of the columns from AI table to do that. We're going to go ahead and specify and go down, drill down to the records. Then we're going to go ahead and specify the amount, which is... To, uh, 210 customer white all right we're just gonna let's go ahead and expand this real quick so you can see that everything that we have going on here so we specify the the amount and the tax rate let's go ahead and structure that information so we're gonna go ahead and specify the end rate and it's gonna be coming from the inputs all right we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create this function it's i'm gonna just copy it so, and then we're just gonna just kind of talk about it and just break it up. So we're going to be calling this function it's called calculate total, which we're going to it's going to be accepting the amount and a tax rate. So the way it's going to work is it's going to grab the tax information. It's going to it's going to divide it by 100 and then it's going to add, it, multiply it by the amount and that's what we're going to be doing the tax amount. And then the total is going to be the amount plus tax, whatever the calculation is that you came up with with on line number nine. And that's going to be the total. So this is what we're going to be charging the customer in our case. And then we're going to be returning that whole object that contains, contains two properties. The first one is the total and the second one is the tax. We're going to be doing two fixed here so that so are going to be two decimal places on the right. And so that's going to be that for the code. For the amount that we've given it, uh, we come up with 27.32 total. And the tax is going to be 17.32 based on the tax rate of 8.25%. Let's go ahead and take a look at working with the template itself. Let's go ahead and duplicate the template that exists. So as you can remember, we added this template here. This is going to be the template that we're going to be reusing across all our different invoices. But we want to substitute directly into this template. We want to reuse this template for our different clients. So we're going to go ahead and copy this template and we're going to make each each time we work with a client we're going to go ahead and copy it right we're going to copy this template and we're going to be using that template instead to substitute we're not going to be uh, substituting directly onto this file and we're going to be adding the we're going to be duplicating the template so we're going to go and look for drive piece and we're going to be looking for the duplicate file so we're going to specify the connection as usual and then and then we're going to have to look for that template right in my case, I'm going to be using this uh, this template or document file ID. So I'm going to be copying that. So that, that's how you actually get the ID for that document. We're going to go ahead and hard code that here. So and then we're going to be naming this the name of the new the new file, the name of that customer. All right, we're going to go ahead and inject the invoice ID just to kind of make it unique. So let's go ahead and inject the invoice ID. Which and then we're gonna be doing dash and then the name of the person, right? So it's gonna be the invoice ID dash and then the name of the person. That's gonna be the name. That's gonna be the um, that name of the person, right? And then the folder ID is the one that we retrieve from the top. So either we we it already exists or we created a new one over here. 
So that's the ID that we're going to be. And then we're going to be pulling that folder ID from number eight. So that's what we're going to be specifying here. So that folder is specific to that customer. We can go ahead and test that. All right. So once you do a duplicate of the template, it's going to go ahead and generate an actual, a new file for it. And then they name it number two, which is the invoice ID, and then dash, and then name the customer. And then you can see here, it's, it's basically a document. Then the next step is going to be editing that template. So what we can do here is we're going to add the Google Docs and we're going to go ahead and do an edit template. So for the edit template file, we're going to be using the previous steps template ID or ID of the document. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. It's based on the duplicate file. We're going to go ahead and specify that here. And this is going to be the fun part. We're going to have to specify all the different things. So let's go back to the invoice template. So kind of examine it a little bit. So as you can see here, everything is static on the top. The main thing that we're placing here is everything that's within the square brackets. So the name, company, address, email, invoice date, the service amount, amount over here. And then the amount, same thing here. And then we're going to be adding the total tax and the total amount. All this information is going to be substituted. Let's go ahead and add, quickly add those variables. Email, I think it's just like a fast way of doing it. So just, just keep adding all these different variables. Address, company, and let's go down. You're going to be at due date, service, okay, so tax, uh, total tax, and invoice date. I did, I think I did invoice tax, total tax, yep, total tax, invite, and not. All right. And then all these information is going to be coming from a table. So if you're using Airtable, that's going to be the same scenario or Google spreadsheet. It's going to be the same thing. You're going to be drilling down and specifying each, every single one of these. So I'm going to be specifying the name. It's probably the most tedious process of all these. We're going to be specifying the email. So, so for the due date and the invoice date, as you can remember, we added this a due date fix. So instead of reusing that weird formatted date, we're going to be using the date fix that we created. So we're going to be inserting the actual fix as opposed to the actual actual due date type of service. We'll be inserting that a total tax. Actually, the total tax is, is going to be based on the code that we, we've created up here. I will mount. Let's just add this to information. Total tax is going to be coming from the code. We can insert the total amount here in the tax from the code. And then we can go ahead and test this step. All right. So if you go back to Google Sheet, it created this, the document that we specified that we created the template for. So they created Dwight Schrute. I think that's his last name. That's how we pronounce it. So essentially what we did here, we, we took this document. We went ahead and substituted with a different information, right? So we have the scrape, web scraping, unit price, the total, the sub, subtotal 732, and then the balance too. Oh, the one thing that we didn't specify is the due date. So that's so that we need to fix. I don't think we added that. Okay, the due date. Oh, we did add a due date. Hmm. Oh, invoice date. My bad. So invoice date. So we didn't specify an invoice date. Let's go ahead and specify that as well. Invoice. We're going to be using the... We're going to be using the invoice date fix as that's the formatted date and we can go ahead and retest that all right once we retest it we're going to go ahead we can go ahead and reopen it as it's using the same file so you can see it substituted the actual invoice date over here on the top so it, it should match whatever is specified in the AI table all right moving right along we're going to go ahead and once we have the the edited template file this is just basically a document that we, we created and we substitute information for we can go ahead and save that file as a PDF document. All right, so we're going to go ahead and come back here. We're going to type in Google and we're going to be specifying the Google Drive and then we're going to be using the save file as a PDF. Same connection information. And we're going to be using the number of step 11 step, which should have the information uh, for the document ID. So let's go ahead and drill down to the data and grab this document ID. That's going to be the document ID that we're going to be using to save to PDF. As far as the folder ID, we can use the same one from uh, step eight when we pass in the, when we store it in the actual uh, data store. Let's go ahead and grab that folder ID. 
And then for the actual name of the, the PDF, we're gonna be using the same pattern as what we did when we copied that uh, template. So we're gonna go ahead and insert the actual invoice ID. We're gonna go ahead and insert the invoice ID here, which is number two. And then we're gonna be the dash and then the claim just for consistency. All right, we're gonna go ahead and test that step. All right, so you have the ID for that PDF generated and the name of the file, which is number two, which is the invoice ID and then dash and then the name of the customer dot PDF. And then if you go back to Google Drive and refresh home, you can see here that it generated PDF for the invoice. All right, coming along, that's fine. And then we're gonna go ahead and go again to Google Drive and read that file. And this time we're gonna be reading the file. The last step that we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be sending an invoice, an email to the customer. So that's what we're reading. We're adding the read file here since we don't have a reference to this file yet. So what we did here was we, we saved the file to, as a PDF to the Google Drive, but we don't have any reference to it. So we need a way to reference it and, and secure it as a URL so we can embed it as part of the email. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be specifying the same thing. And this time we're gonna be reading using the, the previous steps uh, document information. So we're gonna go to number 12 or step 12 and we're referencing the ID. And the, doc the destination file name doesn't really matter, but in our case, we're just gonna be using the same name that we named the PDF when we store it to Google Drive. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So once we have that, we read that from Google Drive, it's gonna go ahead and, and store that PDF temporarily to ActiveVisas Cloud. And that's how we're going to be referencing, referencing it in our email. And last step that we're going to be doing here is to send a Gmail and then we're going to be sending an email. All right. And then we're going to be the receiver mail is going to be person record in AI table. We're going to be going back and and adding that here. We're going to go ahead and drill down to the fields and we're going to specify the email. As far as the subject is concerned, I'm going to go ahead and type something like invoice number and then we're going to be specifying the invoice number here which is you can have whatever subject you want here just in our case i'm just gonna i'm gonna do invoice number whatever and then for and then i'm gonna include the type of service that we rendered so in this case we're going to be including for this type of service so whatever that service is and then service and then we're going to be changing body type to html and then for the actual body, let's go ahead and hit enter a few times. It's gonna give us some room here. So we're gonna go and hello, and then we're gonna be specifying the name of the person. We're gonna be adding the person's name, go down to the fields. We're gonna add a name here and then a comma. It's usual, people usually uh, format the email. All right, a bunch. I paste a bunch of text here. So. I just put, I hope that you're having an amazing week. I've attached the invoice PDF that is due on, and then we're gonna go and locate that due date, which is gonna be, we're gonna be use that same fixed date again for the due date. So instead of the due date, we're gonna be using the fixed, which is gonna be inserted here, which is gonna be a nicely formatted date. And then the details of the service and amount are outlined in a document. Thank you for our using our services and have a great rest of your day and then after we have that we can go scroll down to the bottom the sender name is going to be me so i'm going to be putting my name here and the attachment so there's two two fields here for the attachment one is the actual attachment here which is which is the actual file and the attachment name right so for the attachment name let's go ahead and and use the same one that we did for when we save the feed file as PDF, we're gonna go ahead and insert, insert that here. And for the attachment itself, we're gonna be using the step number 13, which is when we read the file. All right, so the result for that. We can go ahead and do a test on that one. All right, so after we, se we sent in and we did the test flow, we can go ahead and switch to Gmail and open that email. And you can see that the invoice number two, and then for the type of service that we rendered, Hello, the name of the customer and all there. And then in the nicely formatted date for the due date and then warm regards. And then it includes the attachment, which includes the actual PDF for the invoice. So that's what we, how we include the and make the email and include the invoice and the PDF information.
on the document. So that's how we include the PDF in the when we send the email for the invoice. All right, we, before we jump into the, the second part of this automation, which is another flow that we're going to be discussing in this demonstration is, if you can remember, we added this last field right towards the end, which is like the status status field. We can specify either the sent or is ready. So we can use the status field to determine if we want to go ahead and automate, completely automate this workflow where we don't need to click this send invoice for individual or it's going to check this AI table for status every single day and see if the the invoice is ready or it's been sent already. So it, we're going to be ignoring the sent status and we're going to be looking for the ready, ready type of status. And those are the ones that we're going to be sending the invoice for, right? So by default, it's going to be set to ready. So every time we, we create an invoice for this customer and send an email, we're gonna go ahead and switch this to a sent status so that when we don't have to, we can avoid having to resend that invoice to that customer. So that's what we're gonna be doing. All right here, so back on ActivePieces here, we're gonna go ahead and add a new flow. We're gonna go switch this to a schedule based where we're gonna be triggering this on a, let's say everyday purpose, or you can do it on a weekly basis. However you wanna, you wanna send this invoice all right so let's say you want to send this every seven o'clock in the morning whatever specific you can specify the time zone here if you want i'm going to put los angeles as that's my time we can go ahead and go to ai table and we're going to go and do a find records all right and we're going to be specifying the space uh, we're going to be specifying the data sheet here which is going to be the demo Essentially, we're going to be filtering and be using this. If you go back to invoice demo, we're going to be using this status right here, right? We're going to be used checking for the ready status. So if it's ready, that means it's ready to be to be built and sent. If it's on a sent status, we're going to ignore it. So we're only be we're only going to be working with anything that has the status of ready. All right. So the way to do that is we're going to be using this curly braces. We're going to be doing the status and then equals and then we're going to be equals to ready so this is how you specify and and, and filter on ai table so you're going to be this is based on the type of formula so we're going to be specifying the status equals to ready all right so that's, that's how it works all right we can go ahead and test this tab we get like four records here as you can see so if we flip back to invoice demo and we change this to let's say we change one of these to sent right and that should automatic save and then we do a go back on the top and do a retest we should only get three right so because one of them is already set to stand so and so forth so that's that's how you work with that the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a loop here so we're going to be going through all the records that we found through the previous step and we're going to be adding here the, the records that we found so we're going to be looking at the data and then we're going to be the records is the one that we want because that includes the actual array. So you have the records zero to one, two. So we're gonna go ahead and insert the actual records and go ahead and st and test that step. And then you're gonna get the index and you get the item for each one. All right, quite simple. All right, let's quickly go back to the the other flow that we have. So we're gonna grab the, the URL here. We're gonna go ahead and copy that URL and then we can switch back to our, the second uh, flow that we have here. So we're gonna go ahead and do a HTTP request. We go ahead and type it here, and then we can we can send an HTTP request by doing a GET. Remember that the previous type of automation we're retrieving the the actual record ID based on the actual parameter. So we we need to we need to do a GET here and not a POST. So something to keep in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and and copy that, and then we're gonna go ahead and type in question mark and then record thing with what we have in the previous type of flow when we when we kicked it off from AI table and then we're going to go ahead and grab it from the item the record ID so we're going to go down to the, the item and then the record ID so that's what we're going to be specifying here so we're doing we're concatenating the URL question mark record ID equals and then we're specifying the record ID so that's going to be part of the URL and that's one way of doing it another way is basically to basically just copy the URL here and then we're just going to be specifying the record ID in the query parameters. 
So this is probably like a much cleaner approach as we don't have to like have all these clutter in a URL. We can have everything here as part of this URL. We're going to be including the, rec the query parameter as part of it. All right. So once we, we do that, it's going to go ahead and trigger the, the previous one, but we need to publish it first. So we need you know, have to publish that first and then go back to our test step here. We can go ahead and, and click the test step, which will fire off a request to the webhook. And we can go back to the demo here and check it out. So I think the first one was th this one already. So we're going to go ahead and change that. So we're, we're going to change everything to ready. Just as I don't know which one it, type of status it sent for. But it did send an email here. So you can see here it did fire off an email, a second email to this person. So let's go ahead and switch that to ready again. And let's go back to the automation itself. All right. So the next step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be updating the AI table status, right? So once we've worked with that AI table record, once it sent an email to that customer, we can go ahead and update that status to sent because we don't want to have to invoice that person again once we've sent that invoice for the first time. Essentially, you don't, don't want to keep bugging them and sending all this invoice information once it's been sent already for the first time. So. And then we're going to go ahead and use the same item information, the record. And then we're going to be going down to the bottom and we're going to be changing the status to send. All right. And we can change that here. Uh, we can go ahead and test that step and flip back to AI table. And you see here, it changed it to sent. So we can go ahead and switch everything to ready again, just to, so you can kind of see the whole flow and go back on the top. All right. So we're going to go ahead and test all this out it's going to go ahead and fire off run this uh, automation flow it's going to instead of having to run it on a schedule basis i'm going to fire it off manually and it's going to send all the invoice for all the customers that are in the ready state or status so you can see here it changed the stent status already and if you go back to gmail you can see all the different invoice come in all right so one one two Invoice number one is coming in, number three, and number five. All right, and you can inspect the invoice information. They all should be pretty unique. Uh, the calculation should be based on the customer's total amount. So yeah, so that wraps it up for this video. If you have any specific topics that you'd like me to do a video on, please write it down in the comments. Read every single one of them. So please go ahead, don't be shy. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my, my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.